Welcome to the NAHA webinar brought to you by the National Association for Holistic Aromatherapy. To learn more about NAHA, please visit www.naha.org. Tonight's presentation topic is Frankincense Resins and How to Use and Incorporate with Aromatherapy Applications. This educational webinar is being presented by Robin Kessler. Robin is a certified aromatherapist and she received her certification from the Aromahead Institute and continues to take courses in a wide variety of related subjects and is currently pursuing her studies for her advanced graduate certification. Robin consults professionally with practitioners including medical doctors, acupuncturists, and chiropractors. She gives seminars on aromatherapy safety topics and is the lead aromatherapist for the Life Choice Hospice of New Jersey. This is where she works with seniors to help support them with a better quality of life. Robin is a professional member of NAHA and is the NAHA Director for New Jersey Central Region. To learn more about Robin, please visit her website at www.rbkaromatherapy.com. And I'd like to just take a moment and welcome Robin for being here this evening and presenting on this very interesting and unique topic that I know many of us aromatherapists are excited to hear about. You could go ahead and get started, Robin. Thank you, Kelly. I just want to add that I'm also the head consultant for the Stein Hospice Group. So <clears throat> bear with me tonight, too, because a lot of the things I will be telling you have Latin names, and my Latin names are horrible. I am lousy at pronouncing Latin names, so if I pronounce it incorrectly, you could go to Google and figure out exactly how to pronounce it. So oh, before I begin, I want to thank a couple of people that helped me and uh, gave me these wonderful pictures and also helped me with information. Understand that these pictures are copywritten, that you cannot take these pictures without permission from these people. I would like to thank Ryan Bambrick of uh, NWI Trading Company, Dan Riegler, Apothecary Gardens, and Evan Silvertree, who actually goes by Evan Silvesen, the Northwest School of Ar Aromatic Medicine, Higher My Mind uh, Incense, Baswellness, and Matthew R. Gilding, of Ithoral Aromas Incense Company. So who am I? As you can see, there's the picture of me. I basically am, I'm a, as Kelly told you, I'm a certified aromatherapist with over 350 hours of education. I'm now studying for the advanced program and I'm still taking other courses. I wanted to find out what else I could use to help my clients? Resins gave me this opportunity, so I started to research all about them, and then I realized I needed more help and started a frankincense group, which I will tell you about as we go onto the slides, because I will put up the group's uh, link. I have taken many courses on resins, and in this webinar, I will explain all about frankincense resins and give you a better understanding on each one and how you can incorporate them into your practice or even just your life for yourself. So what is frankincense resins? Where do they originate from and their history? As you see here in this picture, this is frankincense. And as you can see, where it grows is in very weird places. So what is frankincense resin? It's obtained from the tree of the genius Buswella as part of the Bursia family. Frankincense and myrrh, and myrrh we add to frankincense because they're very similar, are the only gum. They have a network of resin-bearing ducts 
that distribute fragrant ole gum resin used by the plants for defense against insects, fungi, and the repair of damaged tissue. The trees start producing resin when they're about eight to 10 years old. When the trees are between 20 and 30 years old, the resin is harvested. There are 18 species of frankincense trees, each producing a different type of resin. The trees are slashed and allowed to bleed, which is called striping, which you see in this picture right here. The sap comes from the tree, hardens and forms beads or what you've he heard of many people call tears. The resin is extracted by making a small shallow incision on the trunk of the tree, as you see this uh, farmer is doing right here. The resin is drained as a milky substance, and as it hits the air, it starts to get hard. Frankincense is ruled by the sun in astrology terms. So where do they come from? Well, some of them come from, and I put up a picture so that you could see, and it'll be also in the PDF that comes out so you can actually see it bigger. Some come from Somaliland in Africa, some from India, Ethiopia and Kenyan, and the Arabia countries. They are even being now grown in Israel where they had died off many centuries ago. So what about their history? Well, the Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, and Israelites, and numerous other cultures used frankincenses myrrh as part of their religious ceremonies. Frankincense and myrrh were, extremely, were extensively used in burial rituals as an embalming material and offering to the departed and a means to cover the odor of the dead body. The Roman Empire Nero burned an entire year's harvest of frankincense at the funeral of his favorite mistress. You didn't hear that. Frankincense and myrrh has been used for insects, perfume, and medicine for thousands of years. Everybody asks about BA, which is boswellic acid, and I'm going to shorten it because this way I don't have to keep saying boswellic acid. So when I mention the word BA throughout, you'll know that it's boswellic acid. All types of frankincense are composed of water-soluble gum resin and essential or volatile oils. These resins and volatile oils dissolve in nonpolar solvents such as vegetable oil, alcohol, and petroleum distillates. Boswellic acid, or BA, are resin acids and make up between 30 to 6% of the resin portion of frankincense. They are only present in the resin and not in the essential oil because the essential oil is non-volatile and too large to come over in the steam distillation. The, uh, if you look at the at the uh, website on the bottom here, it basically gives you, this is Robert Tisserin's site, and it basically tells you why the essential oil does not contain the BA. Recent studies have indicated that the boswellic acid in frankincense possesses anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties. There are four resins that contain BA in it. It's Boswella catea, which comes from Somalia, Boswella sacra, which comes from Oman, Boswella sarada, which comes from India, and Boswella papharia, which comes from Ethiopia, Eteria, or Kenya. The rest do not have BA in it, but they have other therapeutic properties, and I'm going to go over each one and explain them, including the ones that do not have BA. Then I will discuss with you how to use them. So this is Vasuela papharia. This is what it looks like when it is in uh, 
when it basically is in Ethiopia when it's actually standing. And this is what it looks like when it is the resin, when it's pulled. As said, it has BA in it. It's a species of flowering plants. It's distinguished from all other types of frankincense by the presence of large amounts of octal acetate and octanol and two other unusual and unique chemical markers, insulol and insulol acetate. Studies have shown that this acetate affects our central nervous system. It is said that insulol and insulol acetate are absorbed by the body through the smoke released during the burning of frankincense as an incense, which then can be used for depression, anxiety, and may also improve memory functions. This is the main ingredients that many churches use, both Catholic and Orthodox. Uh, and one of the reasons that the churches use them is it they put it inside that unit that they swing back and forth. And I think the reason they do it is basically to keep everybody calm and relaxed during services so nobody actually falls asleep and they actually listen to what the priests are saying. Basuela Kateri. Now, some people pronounce it Kateri. Some people pronounce it Kateri. It basically depends where you are. It comes from Somalia in Africa and does have BA in it. This is a picture of what it looks like. This is when it is when it is striped and it becomes the resin. In Somalia, a, tr a traditional use is to burn it as incense for fragrance, especially after cooking something non-pleasant such as fish. It is also burned to ward off mosquitoes and insects and sand flies. It is believed that burning cutary frankincense after an illness will clean the space of sickness and drive away evil spirits. That belief that it'll drive away evil spirits may also help with the anxiety issues surrounding the, the illness. Kateri has a wonderful smell. If you've ever smelt it, it actually smells better than the essential oil. It is added to water in the evening by the Somalis and the frankincense is allowed to soak overnight. The water is ingested for digestion issues, stomach problems, gas, and cramps. The water is also used as a face cleansing cosmetic by Somalian women and believed to be used as an anti-wrinkle cosmetic. Another interesting cosmetic note is that it was crushed that they use crushed burnt frankincense was an ingredient in ancient Egyptian women as eye makeup. It is said that up to 90% of Basuela Cartier resins are sold to the perfume industry, with France being one of the major purchases. And I could definitely see this because of the wonderful smell it has. It has been shown to fight implement inflammatory diseases like asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, atopic dermatitis, and Crohn's disease. Basuela serrata also has BA in it, and it comes from India. This happens to be one of my favorites because it's excellent to be used in a salve for pain in your joints and muscles. It's used extensively for hundreds of years in the Indian healing tradition of Avedia. Serrata is considered a NASET or non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug, causing little to no side effects or irritation compared to steroid drugs. And it works very similar. And it is wonderful. It's used to treat arthritis, osteoarthritis, inflammation of the joints, bronchial asthma, and recently has shown promise treating ulcerated colitis and Crohn's disease. Growing from India up through the Punjab into Pakistan, Sarada is used extensively as an incense and incense ingredients in local rituals and ceremonies. Frankincense, as 
I said before, is ruled by the sun from an astrological point of view, is calming to the mind, helps raise one's spirit, and is said to generate heightened feeling of spirituality and well-being. This could be why it can be used for those who really need an uplifting. Basuela Sacra, which comes from Oman. The best grade of this frankincense species grows in a specific region of Oman called Salala. Within Salala, we find the Dafar Desert. And within this desert, there are mountain ranges that are part of the al Hajari Mountains. It is along this dry side of the mountain where little rainfall is present that the conditions are just right to grow one of the finest of all frankincense. This frankincense comes from the mountainside. It's called Hajari. Some people pronounce it Hajari. Some people pronounce it Hajar because it's named after the Hajar Mountain. It, Hajar is the Arab word for stone. The mountains are referred to as Al Hayib Al Hajar, which means the stone mountain. The environment of this region has an effect on the chemotype of the sacra, making it not only a, a much more fragrant resin, but it's considered to contain higher levels of boswellic acid. Boswellic sacra is graded by size and color the highest grade being Royal Hajari. Royal Hajari is the greenest of the season's resins and collected from the younger trees. Baswellic Sacra has been in the spotlight recently for its analgesic properties. It aids with arthritis and more specifically as a potential treatment for tumors and growths. And as you can see here, this happens to be Royal Hajari, and it is the most expensive. It is ex one of the highest priced resins out there. So frankincense versus uh, sacra. Many have said that sacra and katari are the same species. But the trees look different and they come from two different countries. But the resins, as you see, here's Katari, here's Sacra. They almost look identical. There are many theories on this. I put up this website for you to read what PubMed had to say about it. And uh, the what they write about it is very interesting. So you decide whether or not they're the same or different. There's not that much into information on the internet about these two because scientists are still scratching their head whether they basically are the same species. Uh, there are There is work being done to try to figure it out, but they really haven't figured it out yet. So the only thing I can tell you is to surf the internet like I have. And this is basically all I found on the subject. Baswella feriana. This has no baswellic acid in it. This is a picture of what it looks like. And this is what it looks like when it is the resin. It's native to northern Somalia, where the locals call it Maji, or the king of all frankincense and their pride of joy. With a sweet and warm amber fragrance, highlighted by spice and floral notes, this resin differs from most of all the other resins because it's pure oily resin and has lack of water-soluble gum, which means it melts much easier than all the other resins. The West sees very little of this precious frankincense, averaging around 99% oily resin with barely any water soluble content as compared to the others. This red frankincense is all fragrant, fragrance. Most of it is imported to Egypt. It can be chewed like gum and I've chewed it. You just gotta be careful if you have fillings 
because it can pull out your fillings. So I suggest that if you do get Fariana to suck it, don't chew it or you will be going to the dentist, unless of course you have no fillings in your mouth. It is perfect for making cream salves, tinctures, as, and also natural cosmetic fragrant and healing products. It is excellent for a toothache. I have put it up on a tooth that was bothering me and it actually took away the pain. It's excellent for mature skin and signs of aging. It works well and saves for arthritis and also muscle and joint pain. It is anti-inflammatory, has shown to either reduce cartilage deterioration or rebuild cartilage. It kills the H. pluri bacteria that causes ulcers and is used in skincare products as are all the other types. It's easy to work with since, as I said, it, it mixes and melts directly and it just is absolutely wonderful. And with these resins, you can mix different resins together, just like we do essential oils. We blend them together to get exactly what we're looking for. Baswella neglecta. This comes from Kenya, and it has no boswellic acid in it. B. neglecta has the warm, sweet amber notes of frankincense and the uplifting, bronchial, dilating freshness of sweet balsam fir trees. It helps calm the mind and is conductive to medica meditation, clarity, and thoughts and spiritual pursuits. It dra dramatically reduces the feeling of anxiety and panic, the emotional distress, mental anguish and confusion, and the physical knife sharp pangs in the heart area one can experience with anxiety. It eases the breath physically and emotionally, lifting feelings of heaviness and tightness from the chest. Some who suffer from asthma have found it alleviates the tightness, shortness of breath, and the sense of panic that accompanies an asthma attack. It can bring a feeling of deep calm to the mind, body, and supports a deep and restful sleep. In, in common with the rest of the family, Baswella neglecta is ruled by the sun and has a strong affinity with the heart and chest. Like the sun, all types of frankincense are warming, anti-inflammatory, expand and brighten their perspective, and promote feelings of spirituality and well-being. As my friend and my mentor, Dan Ringler, Ragla, sorry, Dan, if I pronounced you wrong, would say it is one of the best resins to use for anxiety and stress. And that is exactly right. I use it in my practice for uh, anxiety, and it is absolutely wonderful. I'm bringing Mur into this because Mur also, as I said, is considered very close to frankincense. Now, here comes the Latin. And as I said, if I pronounce this wrong, well, well, comaphoria myra, myra. Hopefully I got that right. But if I did, please bear with me. It's the aromatic a aromatic resident of number of small thorny tree species of the genus comaphoria. It is native to parts of Saudi Arabia, Oman, Yemen, Somalia, and Eastern Ethiopia. And as you see on the bottom, this is what it looks like. Myrrh resin has been used throughout history as perfume, incense, and medicine. It is a natural gum. When a tree wound penetrates through the bark and into the sapwood, the tree bleeds a resin. Myrrh gum, like frankincense, is such a resin. That's why they compare it so closely to frankincense. The word myrrh corresponds with a common semectic root, M-R-R, -R, meaning bitter. I will tell you, it's very bitter. If you pop this in your mouth, and you will make the most horrible face because it is extremely bitter. In Chinese medicine, myrrh uses 
uses are similar to those of frankincense, which is awful, often combined in liniments and incense. Myrrh is mentioned as a rare perfume with intoxicating qualities in several places in the Hebrew Bible. Myrrh is mentioned in the New Testament as one of the three gifts, along with, you know, gold and frankincense, that the Magi from the East presented to the Christ child. In pharmacy, myrrh is used as an antiseptic in mouthwash, goggles, and toothpaste. Myrrh is currently used in some ligaments and healing salves and may be applied to abrasions and other minor skin elements. Myrrh has been recommended as an analgesic for toothaches and can be used for liniments for bruising aches and pains. Myrrh is common ingredients of tooth powders. Myrrh and borax and tincture can be used as a mouthwash, a compound tincture, or horse tincture using myrrh. A lot of veterinarian practices use it for healing wounds. Myrrh gum is used for indigestion, ulcers, colds, cough, asthma, lung congestion, and arthritic pain. And you can put this in your mouth. Yes, it's a bit bitter, but I will tell you if you have a cold sore or if you have any type of any kind of sore in your mouth and you put this in your mouth and you let your saliva melt it down, you will find that the cold sore will slowly go away and the toothache will go away at least until you can get to the dentist. Elemy. Everybody talks about Elemy. I'm going to try to pronounce this one. Can a room loves an icon, and I know I got that totally wrong. It comes from Madagascar or the Philippines. Everybody seems to talk about Elemy for in aromatherapy, especially in the essential oil. But this resin, when you make it in a saf or a tincture, is to die for. The smell is incredible. I actually, and as I go through and I show you what we make, uh, I actually make a salve out of it, and I use it for perfume, among other stuff, because it smells so wonderful. It's obtained from the elemi tree. It's actually used in varnishes, liqueurs, and lacquers, and traditional medicine. The only resin is secreted in the bark and oozes, as you see in this picture, from the trunk in fragrant white masses. And if you put your face up to it, when it's oozing, the smell is intoxicating. When it dries, it gets hard. It's a fragrant resin with a sharp pine and lemon-like scent, and no other. One of the resin components is called amarin. The amarin are three closely related natural chemical compounds of the triplene class. Elamine resin is chiefly used, as I said, in varnishes, believe it or not, and certain printing inks. It's used as a herbal medicine to treat bronchitis, extreme coughing, mature skin scars, stress, and wounds. I will tell you it's excellent for extreme coughing and bronchitis. When I had bronchitis uh, a couple of months ago, I took the Elemi Saf and I put it on my chest and I slept like a baby all night. The name Elemi is deprived from an Arabic phase meaning above and below as abbreviation of as above, so below. And this tells us something about its action on the emotional and spiritual plane. Hydrosols. We talk about hydrosols in resins because just like hydrosols in a in uh, in essential oils, you can actually make a hydrosol out of the resin. It's just like it's the aromatic water that remains after steam distilling or hydro distilling 
the material. Resins are normally done by hydro distilling, meaning they're put in the water instead of placed in the basket above the water. It is refreshing for creams, lotion, and many our aromatic therapeutic properties. It's wonderful for the skin. It's much more gentler than the essential oil. Boswellia neglecta hydrosol is wonderful for anxiety. And if uh, I actually had uh, a, a few people over and I have the Boswellia neglecta and I have Baswella Kateri that I made myself. And I told them to close their eyes and I was gonna spray it in their face. And they closed their eyes and I sprayed the neglecta. And when they opened their eyes, they all they said to me was, wow. Because it made them feel so alive and that's what it's do it does. The neglect to hydrosol is excellent for anxiety. Kateri hydrosol is excellent for skin problems and also as a toner for your face. And it can be also used as uh, for anxiety. What you see in this picture here is uh, Dan Riegler's still. I actually made it. And I put the website on the bottom on my site of how I made it. I have a PDF of step-by-step uh, -step on exactly how to make this still. And I actually have a video there that shows you how I actually made it. What you see on the bottom and over here is the Kateri that I made. And uh, I actually got 15 mils of essential oil out of the Kateri, and it is nothing that I've ever smelled on anybody's product of Kateri. It was just out of this world. So how do they differ? What's the difference between them? In, uh, and I just have to move this over a little bit so I can see it. The, uh, let's see if I could get it up. All right. So essential oil should not be ingested. Resins can be ingested in moderation. The uh, essential oils can uh, interfere with some pre uh, prescription drugs and uh, it, and the resins do not interfere with prescription drugs. Uh, must be used with a carrier oil. Does everybody hear me? I guess now I'm fine. Okay, if you didn't hear me, I will just repeat it because it wasn't moving. Uh, essential oils uh, have restrictions with dilutions to senior and children. There's no restrictions for seniors and children, but you must use common sense. It should not be used during chemotherapy essential oils. There's no restrictions during chemotherapy, but please check with a doctor first. Essential oils are very highly concentrated. Resins are the raw material for the plant and are not highly concentrated. Uh, essential oils do not contain boswellic acid, and there are boswellic acid in four of the resins. And uh, so how can we use essential oils? We can use it, and I'm going to go through each one. We can burn it as incense. We can make tinctures. We can make salves and teas. We can make lotions, we can make capsules, lemonade, water, and we can make different bombs. And you can use the sediment or the infused oil to make soap. This is basically how you can burn it. You can use a manual burner on the left side, or you can use an electric burner on the right side. 
you purchase natural charcoal and it goes on top of the burner. You light it and put a piece of resin on it and it'll start to burn and smoke comes out. And the smoke is what is the medicinal part. If you want, you can also use a tea candle. You pull out the wax from the tea candle. You put the tea candle in here on top and the regular tea candle you put on the bottom. There's a grate on top. On top here where you put the empty tea candle, you put the resin. This way you don't have heavy smoke, but at least you still get the benefit of the resin. For the electric burner, because resin when they melt are very hard to get off, I would say take a piece of aluminum foil and put it on top here, put the resin on top of that, and then when you're done, all you have to do is pick up the aluminum foil and throw it out. And also with just to stress, because you're using fire or electricity, the, the, uh, the electric burner gets extremely hot. So make sure there are no children around and you put it high enough so they can not get to it and it can't fall over. So we also infuse the resin. You can infuse the resin in a hoba or fractionated coconut oil or even olive oil. At the end, I will post where you could pick up the PDF on how to do this. You basically grind, and grind it into a powder, as you see below here, using a mortar and pestle or even a paper bag if you want to get your jollies out you throw it in a paper bag if you really want to get your anxiety out and you smash it till it looks like this it has to look like the powder or it won't melt properly then you put it in a warm bath using a pyrex container with the uh and you use, as I said, the oil of your choice. When it's done, you leave it overnight so it actually infuses more into the oil. Then you strain it in a coffee filter. You can keep the sediments and use it for a face scrub or even a soap. You can make a tincture out of it. Now, this one that you see here is myrrh. This is actually mine. All the pictures that you see where there are, they look like this are mine. I actually did it. You can, inf you can make a tincture. Myrrh is great for mouth issues. You can use, uh, what you basically do is you use Everclear, which is very, very strong alcohol. The higher the alcohol content, the better the resin will infuse. You let that sit overnight also. Uh, some people actually leave it for a couple of days because the more it sits, the better. It's got to turn this color. So if it hasn't turned this color, then you need to let it sit some more. You still, and you want to shake it. Every morning you shake it and you talk to it. If you don't talk to it, it's not going to work. You store it in a cool, dry place. It's excellent, excellent for mouth problems. It's great for gargling. The full recipe is available on the, face, the, face, the Frankincense Face Group page, which you will see as we go further. The link will be up. Lotions and salves. This is wonderful because you take the infused oil that you did and you put beeswax in it to thicken it and then you can make a salf out of it. And as you see here, this salf that I made was a combination of Sariad, Seri, Serrata and uh, Fariana. I mixed the two together, the two oils together, and then I put the beeswax in to melt it, and uh, I made the salf. Tea or coffee, anyone? Yes, you can drink this, as I said. You can make, because you are using the raw material and not the distillation of the essential oil, you can ingest the resin. So what you would do for a tea is you would 
powder down the resin, take an empty tea bag, and you can get empty tea bags anywhere. Try to get a natural one because you are putting it in your water. One six ounce of water, boil the water, place the tea bag in the water and steep it for about three minutes until the water changes to almost a yellow color and you smell the resin. You drink, you drink, you can drink it and enjoy. It's great for stress and anxiety. And not only that, I had surgery, I had thyroid surgery a couple of months ago. And when they took this thyroid out and they had put a tube down my throat. And when I came home, my throat was on fire. I tried everything. I made ices. That didn't help. I made, I lived on baby food. I tried everything. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to have my husband make me the frankincense tea. Now, I can't drink it hot because that would be defeating the purpose. So I let it sit till it cooled and I took little sips. For the first time in three days, I was able to eat spaghetti, which I couldn't get, I couldn't get anything down. It actually soothed and brought the inflammation of the fire down in my throat. And I continue to use it until uh, it took me about another day. And finally, I could eat real food. So I will tell you, it does work. You can put it in coffee. I've made it in coffee. It tastes wonderful in coffee. Even if you put a little bit of milk in it or cream in it, I've, I actually made it with almond milk. And it was wonderful. I came home from a stressful day and I wanted, I actually made it, some people have made it with uh, regular coffee. I made it with decaf and it was just amazing. And I just drank it slow and I felt like I was melting off the couch. That's how wonderful it took all the stress away. You can make it with, you can make lemonade or you can put it in water. Since it smells wonderful, it tastes terrible. So you have to do something to get rid of the taste. So lemonade, lemons, are, fresh lemons are the best thing to get rid of the taste. So you put the powdered resin into hot water you add the hot water. I also have the full recipe on how to do that because it's very long. It's a step-by-step -step with pictures. You let the resin sit in the bottle. You squeeze the lemons into the water. The resin water can be made in exchange for anything that requires water. It can refrigerate in the water without a lemon in it. It could stay for weeks with a lemon in it it could only stay for about a week. I actually make, I use the water and I make frankincense cough drops. And it is wonderful because the recipe requires water. So instead of making it with water, I actually make it with, frank, with the frankincense water that I leave overnight. So it is absolutely wonderful. And that recipe is also in our Facebook group. You can do it with capsules. This is not recommended unless you're under a practitioner's care because you can actually do a way, you only use it if it's really, really needed. Most individuals do not suffer from any major medical health problems, so you don't need this level of frankincense. This form should only be done under the guidance of a practitioner who specializes in the use of resins. For the average person, the, inset, the infused resin, oil, and tea are enough. But what you basically do is you take a teaspoon of this and put it into the capsule. And uh, people who use it, usually we tell them to start very slow one time a day and as said it's excellent for digestion and aches and pains 
we prefer you not use it unless you're under a doctor's care. And we stipulate that in our group. You can make lip balms out of it. And as you see, these are frankincense lip balms. I normally make essential oil lip balms. So I said to myself, you know, I wonder how this would work. So what I did is I took the infused resins, the beeswax, and in this case, I used cocoa powder, cocoa butter. You melt all the ingredients in the Pyrex glass jar in a double boiler method, just like you do the essential oil lip balms. You pour it into the lip balm molds. You allow the lip balms to get hard. You put your labels on. And of course, you store it away from direct heat because it'll start to melt. Not only is it good for lips, it's excellent for very, very chapped lips. But not only is it excellent for lips, if you throw it into your pocketbook, you can use it if you have that little kink in your neck because it has frankincense in it. And you put it on that little kink in your neck and you'll find it goes away. So it has, and it's also great to be used for cold sores. Ooh la la, you can do soap. This is my soap. I made it with, you can make it with shea or cocoa butter. I used melting soap because I'm lazy and I don't know how to make soap. So what I did is I melted the melting soap. I took the sediments from the infused frankincense. Those are the little dots that you see in here. And I mixed it into the resin once. I mixed it the resin into the soap. And then I poured the soap into molds. I did this with Elmi also. And the smell from the Elmi just made it unreal and i actually have the elemy one in my bathroom because i've been using it on my face and it has made my face feel so nice and so soft it's just totally amazing i want to talk about sustainability because it's very very important the frankincense population in the world is greatly threatened due to the ever-growing popularity over harvesting and natural destructive forces the rise in popularity of essential oils had has has had the most devastating effect on these trees local harvesters try to meet large-scale corporate demands of essential oil companies by harvesting much more than the trees can handle jeopardizing the tree's well-being once weakened in this way, their immune systems are compromised, allowing disease and insects to finish off the trees. Frankincense trees are highly endangered, though the demand and trade of this precious commodity has not slowed. Studies show that if we continue down the road over harvesting the trees, the trees can be extinct in about 50 years no more frankincense trees in light of this critical reality local leaders and wild harvesting cooperatives in north africa have begun to address this issue spreading knowledge and best practice for healthy harvesting methods as quickly as possible Make sure you ask your frankincense, resin, and essential oil supplier to look into their co-ops and demand ethical and sustainable sourcing of their frankincense from them. Make sure you purchase from companies that do fair trade and purchase from reputable sources. Those who purchase through fair trade teach the farmers how to grow more trees and stripe them correctly. It also makes sure the people who harvest the trees are given fair wages to feed their families. Many of these trees grow in hard to reach places as you saw by the first uh, slide that I showed you, with poisonous snakes around the trees to harvest. So you wanna make sure these harvesters are treated fairly. You can read more about this on the Northwest School of Iran aromatic medicine website and also on apothecary gardens blog 
So it's extremely important to make sure that you use the resins and the essential oil only when needed. Don't stick it in your diffuser and decide, well, I like the smell of it, so I'm just going to use it because. It should only be used for a specific reason. Knowledge is chosen. Learn about frankincense resins. This is the group I created. I started this group about a year ago because I wanted to learn more about the resins. I was given the resin as a gift and had absolutely no clue how to use it. As, aroma, as aromatherapists, especially those that are certified, we learn so much about the essential oil, but we really don't learn about the raw source, and I really wanted to learn more. I decided we needed people in this group who could help me, and I did some research and found Dan Riegler. Dan is an expert on resin. He travels all over the world seeking it out, and he has years of experience with, with it. I contacted him and told him all about the group and asked if he would help out. He was the start. Not only did he teach everyone else, he helped me teach me also. He is my mentor and my teacher, and I learned from him every day. As we grew, we needed help. We have so many professionals in that group who know about resins and and to help those are that are clueless. This group is very similar to an encyclopedia. We post the resin, give all the info about it and discuss it. All frankincense resins and other resins are in PDFs in our files. We discuss the recipes and how to make the resins and that's all in our files too. We decided also to do a free raffle, which is going on now, which has been donated this month by Joseph D. Lapp. He is donating uh, the uh, Sacra, the, he actually is donating the Royal Hajari, which is so expensive. So if you join the group, you can actually get on the raffle also, which is a major plus, but it expires January 25th. So if you wanna learn more about the resins, please join the group. I promise you, you, it will fill your head with so much knowledge, you never knew that was, that was there. This is the Facebook group. I put the face, this is the face, actual Facebook group. And this is the website, my website, which will also give you the PDF for the resin infusion on how I, and how I made Dan Still. And as I'm told, all members get a copy of the PDF, so don't, you don't have to run and scrummage to write all this down. These are the references that I got all my information from. And this is learning, this is a course by, uh, this course is, oh, excuse me, I've just lost my voice a minute. This is by Evan Silvillian of Higher Mind Incense. He does a absolutely wonderful course on the incense. I took it, I've learned so much information things that I didn't even learn in the certification. He talks about resins, essential oils, and herbs. And uh, this is one of the incense that he actually makes. He gives you all the product that you need. So take a look and see if you're interested. If you wanna learn more about the resins, this is a great course to take. This is my, this is me my website and my Facebook page. And we are also uh, doing some discounts. I'm donating half of an aromatherapy consulting course at a 10% discount off of any blend made. The discount code is up there with the website of where you go. This expires January 26th of this year. 
Evan has graciously donated 20% off his course. This is a special link. This is the only link you could go to to pick up the course. So please, uh, if you're interested, get it now because it expires January 26th. Ryan Bambrick, as I said, owner of NWI Trading Company, a lot of his pictures here are, a lot of what the pictures you saw are his, is giving a 15% discount on retail only of anything that's on his store, and that's the discount he's giving. So before I finish, I just want to show you one thing. Let me just get out of here. Oops. Let me just get out of here. And 